Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hi, here we are with Max. Hello. <laughs> hey, sir. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hey, what's up? Can you uh, introduce yourself briefly who you are and what you do? Uh, yes, so my name is Max Zillebrand. Uh, I'm an open source contributor to many different projects, uh, including Wasabi Wallet or uh, Nodal uh, or Coldcard or, or a bunch of other stuff. And I also do a lot of education on the World Crypto Network, uh, where we talk about uh, well, all the cool stuff in Bitcoin. Yeah, cool. So uh, your presentation today was focused mainly on privacy improvements in Bitcoin, like current and future privacy issues. So what's your view on Bitcoin privacy? Um, we, ha we have a bit of a problem with privacy because we have the tools available to be pretty, pretty private, uh, but we don't use them too much. So, for example, a common mistake is that people reuse addresses. That's horrible, right? Or a common pro uh, problem is that people use SPV wallets uh, that have the uh, bloom filters of the transactions. So you tell a random server which addresses you have, and then he knows, of course, which ones. I mean, with Yes, but it's broken. Like the, the privacy if, if, uh, improvements that the Bloom filters would give us compared to sending the XPUB can easily be broken. So, unfortunately, uh, th that is not, not a real solution. Um, and uh, of course, there's always also the heuristic that uh, the inputs, uh, if there are several of them, that they are common uh, by the same person. Uh, so, if, if for example you have two inputs and one output, then it looks like you have consolidated two of the UTXOs that are controlled by you uh, into one output. Uh, right, and then people know that previously, like all the t the history of these UTXOs are also linked, uh, and and so stuff like bad coin selection and coin management uh, really is uh, is a problem that breaks your privacy. Yeah. So what's uh, what's your view on the on the future of privacy? What can we um, what can we expect? Um, are we to expect better privacy in Bitcoin? How can it be implemented? Yes, absolutely. We have, for example, one of the most powerful tools is coin joints, uh, which breaks this link uh, that all inputs belong to the same person. Uh, and that is really, really cool. So there's, for example, for with Wasabi Wallet, we use the zero link uh, protocol that uses Schnorr client signatures uh, to generate coin joint transactions uh, that are private even to the coordinator uh, that handles all of this, uh, the transaction building. Uh, and uh, it's, it's trustless, it cannot be stolen, uh, which is really nice. Uh, there is also, for example, pay join or pay to endpoint uh, or other coin join techniques that can be used and that are all very, very good. But I think the, the best thing that we have on a protocol level that is to come uh, is the activation of Schnorr signature, if, if that might happen. Uh, because that gives us many, many improvements uh, where we reduce the amount of information that we put on the time chain uh, and therefore uh, attackers have uh, not as much information uh, to spy on you. And we can encode a lot of secrets within one single uh, uh, signature and therefore use very uh, yeah, cool schemes. Yeah, so that sounds very impressive and I think we don't have the time to go into very deep details but can you, can you at least name some kind of a keywords that our viewers can uh, Google or, or, or DuckDuckGo? <laughs> that, that goal for sure. Over Tor. Uh, over Tor. <laughs> with a VPN. Uh, yeah, uh, VPN uh, to find some papers or find some uh, research. So what are the keywords? Yeah, so uh, of course the original Schnorr, uh, Schnorr paper uh, with the signatures uh, I would suggest. That's a good place to start. Uh, of course there are many YouTube videos as well. Um, and then on the more academic side, uh, the Musik paper uh, is actually really interesting. This is a way to do interactive uh, so you, you aggregate the public keys, uh, several of them, into one single public key. And you can only produce a valid signature to this public key if every individual private key uh, has produced a valid signature. Uh, and this means that we can have multi-signatures that are not enforced by full nodes in the Bitcoin script, but that are actually cryptographically enforced with the power of uh, key and signature aggregation. So the Musik paper that just came out rather recently in 2016, very well worth a read. Um, also, uh, the, uh, we can also do something called aggregator signatures, uh, sorry, adapter signatures, uh, which would mean that uh, we, it's kind of like a hash time lock contract where you have a secret, you, you commit to the secret with a hash, uh, you put that commitment on the blockchain, and then when you reveal the secret, it triggers something else in some other script. So that can be used for Lightning Network, right? We use HDLCs there and for routing. Uh, or for example, for coin swaps, where you do atomic swaps of one Bitcoin to another Bitcoin, or of a Bitcoin that is registered in Lightning to one Bitcoin that is only on the time chain. 
Uh, and uh, this now, with Schnorr adapter signatures, this secret and commitment to the secret is now all done with one public key and one signature. So all of a sudden, all these things that we can do with hash time lock contracts, we can do in a way that they look indistinguishable from a single signature Schnorr uh, of, of Schnorr. And again, a single signature could also be a multi-signature or music. Uh, so if you see now one signature on the chain, uh, it could be a bunch of different things, which of course increases the anonymity. So basically we are encoding all the logic, we are, instead of describing it in Bitcoin script, we are kind of encoding it into the mathematical structure of the signature itself. So we just see some kind of number, like uh, however many bits it has, and then like for an external observer, they don't see this structure that this number has, but the one who has some secret knows the structure, right? Exactly, right? The, the revealing of the signature gives you the secret uh, for you to solve the idea of this read logarithm. Um, so you, who already has part of the discrete logarithm, can use this extra secret to tweak the function, that the, this tweaking is the adapter signature. Uh, and that gives you a, another valid solution to something else in the discrete logarithm. Uh, and that then can make you, uh, well, have all the, uh, the necessary uh, proof that you can spend this. Uh, and as you say, everything now is done in this one single signature, which is really, really interesting because all of a sudden we no longer rely on the trust of full nodes to actually validate multi-signatures correctly, right? All of a sudden we say, even if the full nodes want to, uh, like, if there would be a hard fork that full nodes say, even though there is a two of two multi-signature on the chain with three public keys and two signatures, uh, we still, like, for example, we now all of a sudden allow for one, sign one single signature uh, to provide a valid spend. And full nodes could do that. It would be a hard fork, and it's quite unlikely, but it could happen. Now, with these uh, musics, all of a sudden we have this mathematically encoded, and all of a sudden it's cryptographically proven. And this way, it's a non simulation of something that is quite beautiful, which is Bitcoin multi signature and shared ownership of a scarce asset. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite a, a cool solution. And what is the timeline about that? So, do Bitcoin core developers are in the process of implementing it, and uh, in how, how long does it? Should it take, in your opinion, or would it take to actually uh, activate it on the mainnet? Um, very good question. Uh, of course, two weeks. Uh, everything is done in two weeks. Uh, but the, the thing is that it's really difficult. Uh, and it's there's some new parts to it, but some very old uh, things. And we have very good cryptographical proofs. There are no new security assumptions that are would be introduced to Bitcoin Core. Uh, and uh, all, like it's uh, net positive on uh, pretty much all sides, other than changing the protocol. And of course, changing the protocol itself is always a very difficult thing. Uh, but because of the power of segregated witness with the versioning field of the signature scheme, we can now do a very, let's say, non-controversial software where at least the technical side of it uh, is very clear. Um, however, there has not yet been a clear proposal on how we should implement uh, Schnorr into the protocol. So no update proposal is yet made. Uh, because we're also unclear of what exactly should be implemented. Uh, so even the implementation in and of itself is still in review and in, in rigorous peer review uh, to really make sure that we have uh, well, no additional bugs into the system. Um, there's an implementation in the libsec key library. Uh, there, uh, there, like in, in many different repositories, um, like Blockstream probably also has something in, in their elements uh, project. Um, and many people are working on it, uh, among others, of course, Gregory Maxwell, Peter Woolley, Jonas Nick, uh, Andrew Polstra, like all the great wizards of Bitcoin. Um, but it'll take a bit, it's, it's not that easy. Uh, this stuff is actually difficult, and, uh, but we will be at the moon tomorrow, so yeah. good enough. And probably, probably the last question, so we're here at the Lightning Hack Day, and this event is dedicated specifically to Lightning Network, so uh, what is the relation or what are the applications of the privacy tech that you described to second layer solutions such as Lightning? Yes, uh, so, so as I said earlier, right, the, uh, for, for example, the routing of Lightning Network, we use hash time dot contracts, so we have a pre-image, and we hash that, and that is now the invoice. Uh, and so the sender generates a pre-image, hashes. So, sorry, the receiver generates the uh, pre-image and hashes it, and sends it to the sender. And then the sender constructs a route uh, for all the peers to have the same hash commitment. Uh, and then the receiver releases the secret, and everyone gets paid. Right. Uh, but with adapter signatures, we can do all this. Or no, so maybe before, what are the downsides of this is that uh, everyone in the route has the same hash pre-image. And therefore everyone in the route knows that they are in the same route. 
that is not always optimal. And we can then, with adapter signatures, uh, use a different secret for each different peer in the route. And all of a sudden it is unclear if two individual peers are on the same route because there, there is no longer a hash pre image, but just a public key and a signature. Uh, and that, that increases the privacy and it increases also the efficiency uh, because, uh, well, signatures are smaller than hash pre images, I think. Not sure, but I, I think it might be even more efficient on the transaction size as well. Uh, we could also, for example, do something like channel factories, where we have cooperative Lightning Network channel openings on the first layer uh, by different peers. So, for example, there, there are 10 peers in the channel factory, and they generate an uh, aggregated public key with music, and then they put money into this one aggregated public key. So on the time chain, it looks like one single public key. But actually, it's a music of all the different uh, individual 10 peers. And now these 10 peers can start opening Lightning Network channels between each other uh, with a 10 of 10 signature as completely on the second layer. So it's instant, it's cheap, or well, it's actually free completely because they don't even have to route. They just open channels between each other. And as long as one peer of this one channel factory has another channel open to some other peer in some other channel factory, everyone in the two channel factories can route payments just through this one bridge. And of course you have many channels, and you might have many channel factories. Uh, so we will have a very well-connected web of Lightning channels. That sounds pretty impressive. And I, love, and I love how the word time chain is just integrated in the conversation just as nothing happens. So yeah, definitely. Time chain. Time chain. <laughs> well, no, uh, uh, blockchains are, are for the shitcoins, uh, but Bitcoin has always had, and will always have, the one and only time chain. Uh, so we all should move to block time very quickly. Uh, so we'll meet again, uh, we'll meet again uh, in, let's say, 100 blocks. So, perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Good. <laughs>